Please be seated. Well, this is exciting and long prayed for. It's wonderful to be back here in the sanctuary sharing in worship. On behalf of the session, welcome. Welcome to all of you who are here in the sanctuary and to those who are joining us by live streaming this service. I ask you to please follow the protocols that uh, are in place. They're there for our safety and our good health. As you are aware, the offering plates are here at the uh, front of the aisles and you are invited to use them as you come in or as you go out. The session realizes and understands that some people do not yet feel comfortable in coming into a setting where there are other people present, especially in the midst of the uh, most recent uh, COVID uh, outbreaks that are taking place. That's okay. And we want you to know that when you are ready to venture out, we'll be delighted to see you and to welcome you here in this place. But until then, we hope that you will continue to join us in worship through live streaming or by using our church's website. I want to begin this morning with a poem by Robert Frost. It's one that I think a lot of you will know. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and being one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubt if I should ever come back. I shall be traveling with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. How do you handle stress in your life? How do you make tough decisions? Do you get a headache just thinking about it? Do you waffle back and forth? Always looking for a simpler and easier way? With that rolling around in your head along with Frost's poem, Let's begin our worship. I hope that there is a responsive call to worship. Mm -hmm. There it is. I invite you to speak through your masks gently. God hears our cries for help and rescues us from all our troubles. God draws near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. God redeems the life of all people. None who take refuge in God will be condemned. So let us worship the one and praise God. Let us come before our God in prayer. Let us bow our heads. Let us pray. God of majesty and mystery, we come before you in humble wonder and worship. 
source of all that is. You are beyond our imagining. Your creation astounds us with its beauty and power. Word of hope and healing, you defy our explanations with your care. Spirit of purpose and possibility, you touch us when we least expect us and show us which way to turn. Receive our praise and prayer this day as we receive your presence and promise in this hour of worship, for you are the source, word, and spirit of life. God of mercy, with the community of Christ Church gathered here and elsewhere, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, nor have we cared for your world or respected our neighbors as we should. In silence, we offer our personal confessions. Forgive us, we pray, and with your grace remake us in the example of Christ, our Lord and our friend. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During the first one, and it was great, but the government has asked us, believe it or not, to not sing yet in congregations. Um, we can hum along maybe. Uh, they, when I went on the uh, government website, uh, they're not ordering us that we cannot sing, but they are really asking congregations uh, not to sing at this point. However, the, the next two hymns uh, you're gonna know really well, so if I happen to, I'm deaf this morning and this year, so I can't hear anything. Lois. <laughs>
I want to take just a moment to say thank you to Marshall, to our tech team, to all the soloists who have, and musicians who have participated in the last year and a half or more while we've been doing our services online, totally online. Music is such a critical part of our worship and to have the people at the tech desk being able to share that and have the elders forwarding that out to our church family and way beyond our church family has been an absolute blessing in the midst of COVID restrictions. So I, I just need to say thank you publicly. I, I've said it in private, but I, I want to acknowledge it publicly to, to all of you who have backed up and encouraged the ongoing worship of this congregation through this time. The Gospel reading this morning is from John's Gospel, reading from the sixth chapter, verses 56 through to 69. These are words of eternal life. It's a hard passage. It's hard to hear and hard to understand, and a lot of people stumble on this passage. Hear now the word of God. Jesus is speaking here. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? <laughs> Apparently it does. Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him? And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by my Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The message is entitled, No Turning Back. Let us pray. Abide with us now, Heavenly Father, through this time of reflection and meditation. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few decades back, at the dawn of the space age, it looked a lot like the United States was losing the space race. 
The journey to space flight was one filled with challenge and with accomplishments and with setbacks. Both Russia and the U.S. began the work of putting a human into space. The American project Mercury was projected to put a man in orbit by late 1960. But delay after delay, sometimes out of caution, sometimes out of safety concerns, allowed the Soviets to put a man into orbit in April of 1961. The best the, the Americans could do a month later was to send astronaut Alan Shepard on a 15-minute suborbital flight. Yet, on the basis of that suborbital flight, while American morale was low, it was President John F. Kennedy at a joint session meeting of Congress on May the 25th in 1961 committed the U.S. to landing a man on the moon by the end of the decade and bringing him back safely. Some people question the sanity of that proposal. How could you talk about going to the moon when no American had even been into orbit? Four months later, on September the 17th, with only one more suborbital flight to America's credit, and the first orbital flight still five months away, Kennedy spoke to an audience at Rice University and he explained why this choice was so important. And this is what he said. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and to do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one we are willing to postpone, unwilling to postpone, and one that which we intend to win, and others too. I want to focus on this, the reason for doing some really difficult things in life is not because they are easy, it's because they are hard. In today's passage from John's Gospel, some of the disciples told Jesus that his teachings were too hard. They wanted something easier, easier to swallow, easier to understand, easier to accomplish. Many of them just left muttering, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? Jesus did not take the road well traveled. Matthew, Mark, or Matthew, Luke, and to a lesser extent, Mark, tell us that Satan offered Jesus an easier road to Messiahship. All Jesus had to do was turn stones into bread for his own benefit when he was hungry. That's all. He should never have to suffer because surely God would protect him from all harm. And why wait to become king of kings and lord of lords when he could do it right now? No cross to bear, no humiliating death. But Jesus had already rejected such temptation and was determined to take the harder path the path of the suffering servant prophesied in Isaiah. But so many people weren't looking for a difficult road. They wanted more free bread. In the Gospel of John, you either get it or you don't get it. The first disciples followed Jesus. They got it. Nicodemus he didn't get it at first. This business about being born again puzzled him. And even though he was an expert in biblical law, he couldn't get away from the literal image of returning to his mother's womb. Later, though, by the time of our Lord's death, Nicodemus was ready to stand up 
for Jesus. He finally got it. The woman at the well got it. She was able to look beyond the literal meaning of living water, a moving stream that never ends, to the spiritual meaning of the term. And as a result, despite her brokenness, she was able to lead her whole village to a belief in Jesus of Nazareth. The man born blind got it. The religious experts didn't. Some people get it. Some people don't. Some people came to Jesus expecting that they would no longer have to work to earn their daily bread. That Jesus, like Moses, could rain manna down from on high. They wanted the bread of life that Jesus offered to be a repeat of the miracle of the loaves and fishes. But so many people continue to grumble despite God's gracious bounty. John's gospel used the cinematic technique of seamlessly moving from one locale to another. And it's not always easy to follow Jesus, especially when he concludes by saying something that's shocking. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? These followers of Jesus didn't get it. Some people reach the limit of their belief and they back away when things get challenging, when things get hard. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you, to you are spirit and life. Jesus told them and us that there is a spiritual truth at the heart of these difficult images. And if we are willing to travel the difficult way, we will get it. We will be rewarded. Then John went on to say, because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Good old Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. We can say we believe in Jesus. But being a disciple, being the presence of Jesus in a hurting world, and trusting Jesus is a lot harder than just saying, oh yes, I believe in Jesus, I'm a Christian. Yet it is worth doing the things that are hard. Besides, as Peter said, to whom else can we go? You, you might think that the world offers you a lot of choices. But if you do not choose Jesus, where else can you go? We sometimes sing a popular praise chorus, and we're going to, well, you're going to hum it. Some are going to sing it a little later in the service here. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And the song continues on with these words. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. 
Jesus asks us to go further when life gets hard. Not everyone will. Not everyone wants to. When things get hard, many back away. What, what's it going to take for you to believe? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to heaven before, to where he was before? Will that do it? If you saw Jesus ascend to heaven, would that do it for you? Will we be the body of Christ in this world, broken like a loaf of bread, so that others may be sustained, witnessing our hardships and how we deal with them, to prove that Jesus Christ is Lord? Will the blood of Christ be shed before all, through our willingness to live our best life for our faith? Or will we be offended by the body of Christ visible in this homeless, in the homeless, or in the refugees of this world? In the witness who, witnesses who bravely disdain temptation? How often have we backed away from things because they are simply too hard? How often have we as a church taken the easier road? How many of us are willing to stand up to the world today? God calls us to make a choice, and making that choice there is no turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back day by day. Amen.
just before Jim comes, uh, he was thanking the tech team and the musicians so much for these last 17 months. A church could not be looking for a pastor at a worse time than through a pandemic. Uh, these last 17, 18 months, uh, even though the search team has tried to do their job, you can well imagine uh, how difficult that is. Thankfully, Dr. Jim has been in our midst. He's given us absolute consistent ministry all through on the, our Sunday morning broadcasts and uh, also in leadership uh, behind the scenes. He's been absolutely fantastic. So we thank you for that. Let us come before our God in prayer. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. God of growth and goodness, we offer what we have to share, knowing that many of us around, many around us in our communities and around the world have seen crops wither and soil turn to dust. So bless what we bring this day and use it to spread seeds of hope and well-being among those who face an uncertain future. Make us generous neighbors to all in need for the sake of Christ, the bread of life. God of all creation, the world is filled with your goodness and all nature sings in praise of you. We give you thanks for the stillness of night and the rest it brings, followed by day filled with energy and creativity. We give you thanks for summer, which brings time to reflect and times to produce, periods of hard work as well as vacation days to regather our strength. Thank you for life unfolding with many blessings. We thank you too, O oh God, for new life born among us, for new opportunities emerging, for new insights and discoveries, and for new relationships. Help us embrace this newness after months of isolating, worrying, and wondering what comes next. You hold the future in your hands, O oh God, and we are grateful. Grateful that we can trust that you will walk with us in all the days that are ahead. We pray for those who work on the seas or in the fields, providing for so many others. We know their work is uncertain in these times and ask you to give them courage and strength to meet the hard times. We pray for those who work in essential services, often at night or while others enjoy leisure time. We know that their work keeps us safe and healthy maintaining services and resources that we all depend on. Encourage them, O oh God, and give them all perseverance to meet the challenges of dealing with hard times. We pray for those who lead and for those who form policy and keep order in this country and around the world. Make them alert to the temptations of their offices so that power is not abused and that justice is maintained fairly without discrimination. And Father, on this day we cannot help but remember all that is happening in countries in this world that are in absolute turmoil, where literally thousands of people are scrambling to survive each and every day trying to find a way to safety, many of them trying to find their way here to Canada or to the U.S. and to other places in this world that offer a better, more safe and secure life. Be with them and all the agencies that are trying to bring relief and freedom. Gracious God, as we have received, free us to give. As we have been loved, Open us to love others as we have known peace. Let us serve as peacemakers. As we have been freed, use us to work for freedom with justice for all. These are gifts of your reign taking shape among us 
And so we pray with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So as you have heard each and every Sunday now for a number of years, these words, keep your eyes focused upon the cross of Christ as you go through the days that are yet before you. Let your judgments go and live and breathe in the light of Christ and the wind of the Holy Spirit. Receive the benediction. Now go in peace. And may the blessings of God, our Heavenly Father and Creator, the love of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior, and the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit be upon and within you and all those you love today and forever. Amen.